Arthur Edward Smith, known to all as Ted Smith, was born in August 1920. He began his working life as an English teacher, but it is for his lifelong dedication to the Wildlife Trust movement that he's celebrated. I wanted to see these places preserved, I wanted to see these places protected, and uh, I felt that um, you know, nature was important and people were going to find it more important. Ted was born in Ulford, Lincolnshire. He came from a long line of rural craftsmen. Educated at the local grammar school in the 1930s, how did his interest in nature develop? How I became a naturalist, that, that's a mystery. I've never really made up my mind um, what triggered that. Um, I think I was conscious of um, birds in particular from quite an early age. The swifts uh, nested under the eaves of old cottages and um, the, the swifts screaming over the rooftops in the evening always sort of fascinated me. So uh, this, this developed. I, I, I took to sort of roaming in the countryside round about and so on. My parents uh, had no sort of interest, although they didn't, uh, didn't discourage me in any way from, from doing it, um, with a cheap pair of binoculars and uh, coward little um, birds, uh, British birds with Thorburn's illustrations, very tiny illustrations, not much good for identifying, but charming uh, illustrations anyway. Um, I became reasonably proficient in and as a bird watcher. I'm pleased that I lived in the interwar years because I think so much of the, the old tradition, the old sort of way of living was still there. It was beginning to fade out, but it was still there. In the countryside, a lot of land had been ploughed up and during the war and so on. But it's a point that I ought to make at some point that um, I think there was a general expectation that after the war, um, agriculture would not go back to its sort of um, pre-war um, uh, sort of poor condition, um, but uh, it, would, um, it would revert to some extent to what it had been like with some improvements. I think nobody foresaw in, in 1946 um, that there was going to be an enormous intensification of agriculture, you know, going to be driven by by bigger machinery and uh, um, massive use of chemicals and so on. After gaining a master's degree in English at Leeds University and a spell teaching in the city and then Norfolk, Ted returned to Lincolnshire in 1948 as a resident tutor in adult education. He knew there was an urgent need to save some Lincolnshire land as reserves for nature. Gibraltar Point was one such site, and Ted drew up plans to designate and manage it as a local nature reserve. He also persuaded the County Council that the Lincolnshire Naturalist Trust, formed for the purpose, could take on the job. My first uh, concern really was for this piece of coastal land, sand dune, salt marshes, um, at Gibraltar Point, which is about three miles south of Skegness, where the Lincolnshire Coastal juts out into the wash. And uh, I'd been there way back in 1937, I think, I went for the first time and fascinated by the place. I went to see the shorebirds in the autumn and uh, little terns in the spring and so on. So when, the, when we started the trust in 1948, um, Gibraltar Point was our really first concern. Also, I'd met up with a fellow ornithologist and we decided it was just the place to start a bird observatory. My friend and I went to Skokum one day in May 1948 um, to see how the observatory was run. And that was a memorable visit for me because my future wife happened to be staying there at the same time. She was a botanist and had uh, been before and decided to go back in the spring. And um, so she came here to see me later on in the summer and we married the following year. So we had a, it was a sort of partnership really of, of common interest. As early as 1954, Ted Smith lectured on his vision for local wildlife trusts. They would be independent organisations devoted primarily to conservation, but most importantly, deriving support from a wide section of the community and their reserves would offer open access. 
I think the popular idea of a nature reserve in 1948 was a place that uh, you put a fence around and kept people out. But Gibraltar Point had to be different. You know, we knew that uh, there was free open access for people anyway, so we had to reconcile conservation of its wildlife uh, with access. Uh, but it also gave an enormous opportunity, of course, to interest people, to provide facilities for research and study and so on. And this is very much on the lines of what the um, famous um, command paper 7122, which really laid the foundations for nature conservation in this country. Um, it was really their, um, uh, th th their vision really, of what nature reserves should, should do. And a little book by Sir Arthur Tansley, who was the first chairman of the Nature Conservancy, had influenced me very greatly um, about this. It was a very small beginning. I mean, at the end of the first year, um, the end of 1949, I think we had 129 members. Um, the income, I think, was £82, of which we spent 64 I've often reminded our present treasurer that was <laughs> that was the best financial position we ever enjoyed. <laughs> um, but it grew slowly um, through the uh, through the fifties and sixties. As more people come to enjoy this reserve, and there were more than one hundred and fifty thousand in 1966, there is a danger that they will inadvertently damage or destroy some of its interest and beauty. Take the shorebirds, little terns, and these ringed plovers. Their eggs and chicks are camouflaged against natural predators. But this means that people don't see them. To protect the birds and their nests, we have asked visitors to avoid the nesting areas. The response has been encouraging. The big heaths of northwest Lincolnshire had been largely forested in the 1920s and 30s. Um, there were still remnants left um, by the 1940s, and we were anxious, you know, to protect those. So, in fact, the Trust's first acquisitions, uh, freehold acquisitions, were heathlands, uh, Scotland Common and, and Linwood Warren. And um, had we not acquired those, I think certainly Scotland would have become um, or chicken farms, or it would have been a forested as most of the Lawton and Scotton heaths had already been. Um, Linwood, I think, would have become a golf course. And of course, the old meadows began to go at a very rapid pace. In fact, by the 1960s, um, we were the, the, they were at the top of our list of priorities, and uh, we. Uh, we were able to acquire a, a series of old meadows. Most of them had survived because they belonged to old farmers who didn't want to change them, or there'd been, um, been some sort of dispute about them or so on. So, um, but so we've got some lovely meadows now, and of course um, we, people are getting now to recreate meadows as well. In the early days, Ted managed the Lincolnshire Trust from his home. But in 1963, with Christopher Cadbury as its president, he was also appointed an honorary secretary of the Society for the Promotion of Nature Reserves. He began to sow the seeds that would lead to the establishment of the Wildlife Trust movement as it's known today. In 1960, Lincolnshire hosted the first National Conference of Wildlife Trusts, and Ted travelled the UK, supporting those who wanted to start their own county trust. We provided people with a model memorandum of articles which they could work on and set themselves up as a charitable company. Um, and uh, that was the criterion for membership of the county trust committee, um, provided, they had, provided they had a sort of legal proper legal basis. Um, and uh, a lot of them struggled, as we sort of struggled to start with. I mean, the first, first few years, I mean, uh, a lot of them, I think, um, had difficulty in weathering the, the storm, but uh, they all got through in the end. I spent quite a lot of time in going around, sort of helping them to get on their feet. One of my main jobs, really. Um, and um, 
I say, they all came through in the end and have grown enormous. When I look at some of the very flourishing trusts now and think back to the early days, what a struggle they had to, to get going. But what we did was to uh, give them examples of how other trusts had done it. Um, when I went round to see them, that was one of my main themes, really, you know, how it was done in Gloucestershire or how it was done in Northumberland or, or whatever, not necessarily applicable to you, but, you know, there are various ways of, uh, of doing it, and we work on examples that have proved to be successful. It was a very exciting time, really, a very rewarding time. Ted Smith was awarded an OBE in 1963 for his work establishing nature reserves in Lincolnshire and elsewhere. And later he was made a commander of the British Empire for his conservation work. 1974 was another momentous year when David Attenborough opened the new visitor centre at Gibraltar Point. At this reserve, the Trust tries to help people understand and appreciate nature and landscape. At our information centre on the main car park, the visitor can see exhibits illustrating the natural features of the reserve. The seashore, for example. In the centenary year of the Wildlife Trusts, Ted Smith, in his 90s, still serves as president of the Lincolnshire Wildlife Trust, continuing to inspire others in the movement he helped to create. <laughs>